Check it out. June 1957, High Fidelity Magazine. Jensen coaxials. Nice. Hey, a flux valve tone arm. Appropriate. Oh, and look, there's my Ico HF52. You know, this Bozak speaker would make a great companion for Old Blue. Let's get one. Oh, beautiful. And look at those measurements. 12-inch woofer, two two 2-inch coaxial tweeters, 5-inch mid-range. Give me a twirl, sweetheart. Wowza. Hey, how about a closer look? Nice. A B302A. Just the model I wanted to get my hands on. Wait, did I just meet to a vintage speaker? Anyway, let's see if that beauty's only skin deep. Let's just slip this off. Wait, what's this? Oh, kimchi. I, I mean, kim sol. It's a type of insulation used back in the day before better materials became available. Up close, it looks a lot like crepe paper. A few old speakers used kim sol to reduce cabinet resonances. This Bozak is stuffed with the stuff, and this detached piece is supposed to hang like a curtain near the back. I wonder what other surprises are in store for us. Hey, look, there's a wood screw, an empty bag, four wood screws stuck to the mid-range magnet, two on the woofer magnet, and some more in this corner. You think all these screws used to be in this empty bag? Ah, eBay, you're a wonder. Oh boy, check out this nifty wiring. This is supposed to connect to the... What the f***? Another screw? Okay, my arm's getting tired holding this back panel open, but I can't remove it completely because these two wires are soldered to the input terminals and crossover. That takes care of that. Now let's unsolder and disconnect the remaining wires so we can remove the drivers. First, these two, that's connect the crossover to the coaxial tweeters. Yeah, believe it or not, those dangling twisties are factory. Let's now remove the mid-range, the woofer, and the crossover. Yeah, I'd say this Bozak's beauty is definitely not just skin deep. The drivers are all in good shape, and here you can see how the two coaxial tweeters are mounted and where their wires protrude out the back. On the woofer, we've got a good sized magnet and a sturdy cone made of a pulpy material, the recipe of which Rudy Bozak, founder of Bozak speakers, took to his grave. Apparently, it's made of paper, lamb's wool, and other secret ingredients. The woofer and coaxial tweeter frames are mounted and held together by these bolts. I've loosened one here to give you an idea of how that works. The mid-range also uses a paper cone with a very stiff surround, another big magnet, and marked model number B209. Here's the crossover. Behind these plates will no doubt have some capacitors. These are the terminals to connect the three-way system to the driver, an inductor for the mid-range, and a larger one for the woofer. The components are all assembled on a block of plywood. Let's get the crossover on the bench so we can test the components. Just have to remove this cover plate. Okay, we've got seven wax paper capacitors. Looks like they're all five microfarad at 50 volts and were manufactured in September of 58. Yeah, way past their expiration date. Let's get them out of there. <laughs> Okay, here are the old capacitors. Let's test them. First for capacitance, uh, around 7.3 microfarad. Uh, not bad really, but still past a 20% tolerance threshold for a five microfarad cap. Now let's test for parallel leakage. Leaky at six volts, 10 volts, 15, 25, and 50. The magic eye knows all. Here's the wiring diagram I made of the crossover and the replacement capacitors I ordered. It's time to rebuild the crossover and I'll do that, explain how crossovers work, replace the insulation, and test the speaker in upcoming episodes. Stay tuned. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.